What's up everybody? Disillusionist back here. Uh, I wanted to say uh, I am sorry for not uploading any videos over the past month or so. Um, I was hit by a car while I was riding my bicycle and uh, kind of uh, put me back, set me back a little bit um, because I couldn't walk very well for about a month. I lost my job. Uh, so I've just been doing odd jobs and all kinds of bullshit to make ends meet. Um, so I've been a little little flustered, um, but uh, I want to keep doing this, I want to keep making videos, so here I am back again. Now today, just to kick things off, you know, it's not a subject that I think hasn't been covered or, you know, necessarily needs another person to cover it, but don't, you know, immediately close out of the video for me saying that. Um, but I do think there are some, some important points to be made about um, what's been happening recently in the media. And I guess this isn't, you know, just something that's recent, but it seems to be growing with pace. People uh, are, are essentially having media hits put out on their head uh, and are just being kind of destroyed in these unfair, um, dishonest kind of ways. And I think uh, Mio Yiannopoulos is, is a, a pretty good example of what's happened recently. Now, um, if you don't know Mio Yiannopoulos or Milo, I don't know if it's Mio or Milo, but anyhow, if you don't know him, then you probably have not paid attention to the media for the past uh, year or so. Um, <clears throat> the dude has been uh, heavily reported on. He's been making waves essentially since anyone's known who he was. Um, and, you know, he, he's essentially uh, a homosexual man who is also a conservative, um, who is also, you know, claims to be Christian and maintains Christian values, um, has a lot of opinions that, that uh, are very controversial and fire people up. It's kind of what he's known for. He had a tour uh, recently called the Dangerous Faggot Tour, uh, just to let you know where he's at uh, as a person. I don't think there's anything wrong with him. I think that, you know, he's an interesting person to listen to because he has a very unique opinion. I think that we can all say that. I think that's, that's a pretty honest evaluation of Milo, but anyhow, recently, um, he got, uh, he, he's been under fire because he's had some issues uh, uh, um, about some statements that he made on the Drunken Peasants podcast. Now, I've been a fan of the Drunken Peasants for a while, um, and I was kind of surprised to see this issue come up because the podcast was kind of a, an older one. It was uh, right around when I think I started watching, maybe a little, I started watching a little earlier, but uh, that was when that Milo Yiannopoulos podcast was originally aired. So I was surprised to see it just now had surfaced that he had said some, you know, some things about his past. Um, and he said the same things uh, on the Joe Rogan podcast. And what's controversial about this is uh, when the subject of uh, pedophilia and child molestation came up, um, Mio made a bit of a off-color joke about his own past with, uh, with molestation and said when he was about 13 or so years old, uh, a Catholic priest uh, whom he called, I believe, Father Michael, um, may have, uh, you know, taught him to suck better cock and such things of that nature. Um, and he also said some similar things on the Joe Rogan experience, which I heard as well. Uh, I listen to Joe Rogan all the time. and. Once again, um, despite those statements, very interesting conversation to listen to. I uh, had never really heard uh, anybody speak like uh, Milo Yiannopoulos. Um, so just interesting to hear that perspective. Uh, a gay guy who, you know, also doesn't believe that, you know, all gays are born gay and, you know, he doesn't file into those, uh, those you know, black or white kind of arguments that people like to have. Um, so a lot of people are saying that he is, uh, he, he's essentially giving an excuse, he's making light of pedophilia, he's maybe even endorsing pedophilia, some of the accusations, um, which I think is just, uh, I think it's dishonest given the context. Um, you know, for, for Milo Yiannopoulos to say what he said uh, is simply a person who's speaking honestly about how he feels to s about something that happened to him. Um, he was molested and he doesn't necessarily see that uh, as, as something that was detrimental to his life. 
Now, you can make an argument either way that you think whether or not he agrees with uh, or that he believes something detrimental was done to him, that of course it was, um, which I, I can see the argument for that. But uh, to, in, to, to tell Milo that he's essentially not allowed to have that opinion or he's not allowed to feel a, a certain way about something that happened to him, his experience. He didn't say this about everyone's experience. He didn't say that everyone who's 13 and has someone older who has sex with them um, is not affected by it. Uh, he's speaking of his own personal experience and he has no negative feelings towards it, at least that he's, um, that he's showing publicly. Now, uh, the bigger issue here, I think, is the issue of censorship. Uh, there's, a, there's a real problem with not allowing people to speak certain ways without fear of losing their job, without fear of uh, losing their career, um, you know, their opportunities, without losing their ability to speak publicly. Uh, and these are the things that are starting to happen to Milo. You know, he's, people are pulling away from him and backing out um, because of some controversial things he said, which uh, if you employ, if you, if you weren't expecting Milianopolis to say controversial things, then you're out of your fucking mind. I mean, if you invited him to speak at, at uh, CPAC or whatever the fuck it's called, I don't even know what it is. If you invited him to speak, uh, then you should have some understanding of who the guy is and, and how he talks. And to all of a sudden go, oh, this thing uh, he said a year ago came out and, you know, that we, oh, that's so disgusting we can't have him anymore. It's just fucking, it's being dishonest, it's being, uh, you know, very hypocritical to, to try and draw a crowd with him. And then, you know, once that crowd gets upset to be like, oh shit, well now he can't come talk. Um, it, it's, it's a ludicrous way to, to work. And the way the, the the tools that are being used to affect this kind of thing, because I think this also links to what has happened with PewDiePie recently. Uh, I wanted to talk about that a little bit. Um, Felix uh, is, and if once again, if you don't know PewDiePie, then you you haven't probably haven't spent a lot of time on YouTube. Um, the dude is you know the biggest YouTuber around. He holds he's the king of fucking YouTube essentially. Um, more subscribers than anybody makes more money than anybody. Um, and he has been attacked recently um, just for, for doing, for once again, making this kind of, uh, you know, uncouth statement that, that a lot of people couldn't, couldn't get on board with. Um, he, he, you know, if you didn't hear about what happened to PewDiePie, he got in trouble because he was trying to show how ridiculous a website, there's some website and, uh, you know, Here's how fucking great of a researcher I am. I don't even know the name of the, the, the site, but there's a website you can pay people $5 and they will do, you know, odd tasks for you. And there's a whole litany of tasks you'd have done. And these, these two uh, this appear to be like tribal looking dudes uh, will dance around and hold a sign up that says whatever you want. And he was seeing how far could you push that. Uh, let's make, let me put the most absurd, you know, discouraging statement I possibly could uh, on this on this uh, sign and see if they if they have any limits so he literally thinks of the most disgusting thing he could he could put on there and that is death to all Jews which now is being used as a case against PewDiePie and saying that he's a fascist and that he's a neo-nazi um, and and it, all, all of this bullshit assaulting his character, even fucking J.K. Rowling stepped in and called him a fascist. Which, by the way, Harry Potter was great, but go fuck yourself. If you're gonna toss around accusations like fascist, maybe you should actually know what the fucking word means. I mean, you're a writer for Christ's sakes and you don't understand the word fascist? Come on. Come on. Don't be dishonest, J.K. Rowling. Let's fucking, let's, let's keep it together. Um, so... He was, he was attacked, he was assaulted, which by the way, if you go watch his channel, the dude makes kind of goofy comedy skits and acts silly and plays video games. If you think he's a fascist, then you, you, you don't know what the word means. That, that's, a sin, that's as cut and dry as it is, as it can possibly be. Um, so he was attacked. And the tools that are being used to discredit these people, you know, PewDiePie, by the way, lost a deal with Disney, he lost a deal with YouTube, he's 
you know, losing um, some affiliate deals that he had, and it's affecting his career, um, for making a joke that, you know, you know, might have hurt some feelings. Oh no, oh, you know, that guy said death to all Jews. Let me completely forget about the context and just say that I'm hurt because I saw death to all Jews and now that, that guy shouldn't have a deal with Disney anymore. Um, the tools that are, that are being used are headline, just bullshit, poppy, clickbait headlines. They get thrown around by uh, internet media and by even, I mean, traditional media in order to buy people in, not on, on a story that they'll actually read, just to buy people in to an idea. And so what I mean is that I think Facebook has kind of shifted our culture of the way we imbibe information. Um, it kind of has to do with this whole fake news thing. And, and the fake news term, I, you know, I think it's a little too loose to throw around. But the idea of fake news is that you can twist and tell a story that really has no bearing. And it's not about putting all this information into a, you know, like a hit piece against somebody. It's just about posting as many clickbait titles of the same thing so that public perception shifts to believe that statement. And so when all you see for days is Mio Yiannopoulos, you know, is, uh, you know, he's justifying pedophilia and there's a weird picture of Milo or, you know, PewDiePie is a fascist neo-Nazi. He's, you know, the alt-right's favorite guy and you post a picture of him in some fucking, you know, war outfit or, you know, next to Hitler or something. Uh, and that's all you see People don't read articles anymore. They just look at that headline and go, oh, well, I guess PewDiePie's a Nazi and, you know, I guess uh, uh, Mio Yiannopoulos is, uh, you know, a pedophile uh, enabler. You know, <laughs> it's, it, it's, it's ridiculous that we, that, that we don't read into these, these bombastic statements, that we just take them at face value because we've seen them enough times. It's kind of like the tactic of branding of, you know, if you see the, the Coke symbol enough times in your daily world, you'll buy more Coke because you trust that product more, your brain's more familiar with it. It's sort of the same shit. If you click on some of these articles, there's like a para they're a paragraph long. They're just the tiniest sliver of information. No one gave a shit to even pay attention to what it was saying. It's just horribly, horribly stupid. No information, because it doesn't matter what's in there, because people don't fucking read it. You know, my, my, what's scary about it to me is when I get in arguments with people online, occasionally they will push, they'll, they'll post a, a link to an article with a clickbaity title that's like, hey, look at this, you're right, you know, it seems like it's against my argument, it seems like they're, they're gonna go like, here's my fucking, the real deal, man, I found an article. But what they did is they went to Google, they typed in some shit, and they, uh, they after that, they, they took whatever the first article that came up that had a title that sounded nice to them, clicked that, copied it, and pasted it. And then I click on the article that you sent me because that's how I like to live my life. If I'm gonna, if someone makes an argument, if someone posts a link to something that might refute what I'm saying, then I should go check that shit out and make sure that I'm not the fucking idiot. So I'll click on the link, go check out the article, and the fucking article proves my point. And I, so I have to come back and go, did you read this article or, cause it proves my point. What, what the fuck are you doing? Why would you post this? This makes you look like a fucking idiot. And then they usually either delete that comment or fucking fly out of there and back out as quickly as they can. I mean, my God, man, like how could you be so fucking stupid? And that's not something that's happened to me like once that's happened a lot. That's happened consistently enough to where I can usually catch someone doing that if they're not being smart about it. Um, and, and using these kind of tools to censor people, um, using these clickbaity titles to change public perception so that the public and all the, the, the PC police, the SJW types, they cut, they're vicious, man. They come after your job, they come after your family. They want to attack you as hard as they can. They wanna fuck your life up because of their misconception of what you're saying. And that's dangerous. When we got attack dogs on the ready, chomping at the bit to just go after somebody, and all they need is a whiff of clickbait article to start attacking that person, 
we have a really volatile situation in which a bunch of people are going to stop saying what they believe, stop saying how they honestly feel, stop trying to make jokes that might be a little off color at the benefit of being funny, and start completely being censored or being silent themselves. And the problem with that, and I will repeat this a million fucking times, as many times as I have to, the problem with censorship is that even if someone is saying something completely batshit crazy, like if you believe that Milianopoulos, regardless of whether he wants to acknowledge it, was molested and it had a detrimental effect on him, even though he says it doesn't, you, you think that, look man, you, there's just things you don't understand about what happened to you and it had to have had a negative effect on your life. Even if you believe that, you, be, you should believe that he should have the right to speak and say that. That he should have the right to talk about that because then if he doesn't talk about it whatsoever, no one's ever going to be able to acknowledge it and tell him that he's wrong. Censorship removes information off the table and that is always bad. There will never be a situation in which having all of the information isn't the best circumstance. We have to operate from facts. We have to operate from reality. We can't just allow ourselves to be manipulated by some bullshit story and just go believe in it just because you saw the headline you know, a million times in a row. Click the fucking link. Look at the stupidity. Look if it even links to anything readable or it's just a million ads on a page with some stupid headline at the top of it. Look at what you're reading because do we want to rule our lives and live our lives based on other people's puppetry, other people pulling our strings and making us believe certain things, or do we want to live our lives intelligently? Do we want to make intelligent decisions based on facts and reality? That's, uh, that, uh, you know, that's, I'm going to end this there because I don't want to get too much in a huff about this. Um, but it really, it's starting to get to a point where it's intolerable, the level of censorship that is going on, that in the name of not being offended, people want to take people's jobs away, people want to remove people from public perception so that they just go away entirely because they don't fit the narrative. Mio Yiannopoulos says that when he was molested, he thinks it's a benefit to him. He's allowed to have that opinion. He's allowed to say that if he wants to. And if you disagree with it, too fucking bad. Too fucking bad. He's not saying the guy who was raped when he was 13 years old by a priest anywhere else is also wrong. He's not saying they're wrong for how they feel if they, were, if they feel distraught, if they feel like they were abused. He's not saying they're wrong. He's just saying that's not how he feels. And when someone is not allowed to say, this isn't how I feel, then we're all fucked. You get it? We, we are all fucked together when we stop being able to be honest without fear of, oh, does my honesty fit into the narrative? Because if it doesn't fit into the narrative, I should just shut up. That's bad. It's real bad. Okay, people. Well, that's it. That's what I got. That's what I'm going to do. Let me know, you know, if you like the video, subscribe to it, uh, or subscribe to my channel. If you're one of my nine subscribers, thank you for sticking around and watching another video, maybe making it all the way through. Um, if you disliked it, Let's yell at each other on YouTube. Fucking post a video back to me. Let's talk some shit, man. Like, that's what I'm here for. Um, uh, and overall, I'm going to try and, and keep being more consistent with the videos. I have to apologize for, for having an absence in videos recently. Um, and I really want to keep this going on at least a video per week basis. Uh, let me know if there's anything you'd like me to talk about. Shoot me a message with that. I would love to hear from you. Thank you so much. Once again, this is The Disillusionist, and uh, that's all I got for you today. Thanks, guys.